Hello everyone, back in the Chargers Hoops TV studios for yet another edition of Chargers Hoops TV. Just another quiet weekend of three basketball games and a movie and a, a quiet afternoon at the go-karts, Ronnie. Uh, yeah, you know, nice and relaxing as always for us here at uh, Chargers Hoops TV. Well, maybe for you, JV, but I've been travelling up and down the state for basketball this weekend, but glad to be here in studio and let's get this show going. It is Chargers Hoops TV. Well, JB, the Casey Cavaliers were in town on Friday night and we had the women's game first up. What were your thoughts there? It was a very interesting start to the women's game. A massive jump out uh, by the Casey Cavaliers and they pretty much held on from the start. A 6-0 run saw coach Dwayne Davey call a timeout. First points on the board for Shana Thompson via the free throw line. Then had a very quiet uh, remainder of the first half really fired in the third quarter and you get those point totals right up but unfortunately the girls just weren't able to build on that one either slow start really hurting them trying to build in the second and third terms showed a little bit of fight there in the last but casey just too strong as expected their four and four record going into this really not reflecting just how good of a team they were the likes of abby bishop and monique conti showing the way and, and really showing why they are the wnbl talents they are final score there in the women's game was only 73-55, so 18 points there, Ronnie, but certainly something the girls will look to build on. Shana, with a bit of a quiet couple of weeks there, obviously trying to build her points back up as well, and Angie Tompkins, uh, not necessarily up to the standard that she'd played in the last few weeks. And of course, the big concern coming out of that game was Paige Bradley went down with an ankle concern and didn't play the remainder of that game, missed essentially the second half. And of course, after the game, we caught up with head coach, Dwayne Davis. Let's hear his thoughts post-match. Don't want to sound like a broken record, but keep saying the same thing over and over again. We're playing some, some really good patches of basketball against some quality teams, um, but then we just follow it up with patches where we're so far removed, I guess, from what we're planning to and trying to do, and, that, and that's what brings us down. Um, tonight, it was the start of the game. Um, we really came out flat, and, and uh, Casey took advantage of that. Um, you know, Casey, again, uh, are a really good side, and with Abby Bishop coming in now for the second half of the season, they're going to be a pretty tough team, uh, you know, um, for the second half. So we knew we were up against it, um, you know, and we prepared prepared for that. But, um, you know, we'd, we'd, I guess we're at the situation now where we're just not quite good enough to sustain it for a full game, um, but we need to get there. And, you know, we seem to be coming up against that most weeks at the moment, um, and but that's the nature of the competition. So. And I guess uh, a pointer to where we need to get to um, as a team and keep improving. And, you know, I think pleasingly the spirit's still there with the girls. Um, you know, even though we are sitting 0-8 and, um, and it has been a long, I guess, first half of the season and a long pre-season, um, the spirit's still there and they're still working hard and, you know, they want to improve. And I guess that's the main thing that we're trying to, to get to. And if we keep improving that first win, I hope we'll, uh, we'll come soon. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll we'll definitely use this period to, um, you know, get some individual work into some of the players that need some extra run and maybe give some sore bodies a rest, um, you know, but obviously the, the extra time together without playing a game uh, is obviously beneficial, you know, Paige has still only been here for, for two weeks now, so, um, you know, we need to still get some, some more time together and get everyone together and moving in the same direction. So um, we'll, we'll use that, that two weeks as best we can and, Hope to uh, to come back for that road trip, ready to go. And also after the game, we caught up with Chargers veteran player, Alex Finlayson. Alex has been in the traps for a while now, a veteran of the team. Let's hear what she had to say. Yeah, no, we actually started a bit better as well. Second half of the first quarter, we started a lot better. We just need to bring the energy and stay together and we'll get there eventually. But they have a very good team. We're coming up against a lot of really good teams, but we've got a really good team too. And we've got a lot, of, a lot of really young talent coming through as well. So yeah, no, we playing the Opals is also a really good experience, but, and it's, well, it's pretty cool for me still at my age to be still getting to play against them and the young girls as well. And it's a really good experience for them as well. Great giving back as well. And well, 
I was going from the youngest player to now basically the oldest player here, so no, it is really good to see them coming through and they're doing really well. It's a massive challenge. Everyone's still loving it and getting out to training every week. We're training, what, four times a week at the moment, so everyone wants it, we all want it. We're gonna get there eventually. At Wilson Homes, we've been building the Australian dream for over 30 years. And today, this purpose is more important to us than ever before. That's why we're going to keep building. Keep building the homes that define our way of life. So don't lose sight of your dream. Because we're going to keep building. Building for you. Of course, the back end of the KC Cavaliers matchup was the men's game. Ronnie, no Jock Perry for the Cavaliers, but still a stacked squad full of NBL level talent, former NBA talent. How did it unfold? Well, this was a close game all the way through, JB. And, you know, Ollie Angerstein was in foul trouble throughout that game and had to sit out a majority of that game. But the likes of AJ Harris, uh, Sam McDaniel, who had a really good first up game for the Chargers, and Harry Froling as well, too. So our big three combining nicely uh, with, with Ollie able to chip in here and there. This game ebbed and flowed with momentum swings. Of course, David Peters very smart in his uh, timeouts for, for Casey, but, but Stewie able to come up with a game plan that was able to, to make it down the stretch as far as, all right, we're going to stick with this Casey side because we know this Casey side will, will be one of the top teams in the competition by far with the lineup they have. But I feel like the Chargers are starting to come into their own. It was a great game. The crowd was on the edge of their seat as we come down the back end of this game. AJ Harris, slowing it down in those final you know 20 seconds or so wanting the ball wanting to take that last shot wanting the cool game and i tell you what he stepped up when he realized the big just decided to back off a little bit enough space for aj to go bang and seal it we were game winning what was one of the most exciting games we've had this season at the kimbra sports center 82 79 our final score line and what a game it was jb a massive game five players in double digits aj with 18 points of course after the game we caught up with coach anthony stewart and fair to say he was uh, pretty relieved with that one ronnie he, he sounded like he was relieved so let's go to that interview right now got a lot to work on a lot, of, a lot to work on like yeah it was a good win um they obviously missing Jock Perry, but they had Mangoy, he's, he's filled in. Um, they, did a, they did a really good job and we just, yeah, it's been a tough few weeks. So uh, we'll be glad the break's here now. Um, Bearstow will, will join us and that will help Ollie, take some pressure off Ollie as well. He's had to carry that, that centre position. If we didn't have Ollie right now, we would, uh, we're probably looking towards next season because I don't think we'd be five and three, we'd probably be two and six. Uh, he, he's done an amazing job. He's certainly opened up a few eyes and um, just the quality of the guy off the floor as well. He's just doesn't ask any questions, just goes about his business, doesn't argue. He, he's a pleasure to coach. Yeah, that's probably what's got the smile on my face that uh, he went and got the ball and he was taking the last shot no matter what and it was a pretty deep three as well. Um, right time on the clock to shoot the ball. Probably uh, probably questioned the shot a little bit, but hey, if, uh, if he makes it, then the next time we're in that situation, I've got no problem with him taking that. Yeah, look, they're, they're a quality team. I mean, I know they're two and six on the ladder, two and seven now, but they've only just loaded up with their team as well. And uh, they're, gonna, they're gonna cause some teams some problems, especially on their home floor. And we escaped that one. We're, we're uh, still waiting for this import to get cleared. And, and best those, and then we can make a run at a, at a championship, hopefully. Um, yeah, we, we just need a little bit of extra firepower. It's always hard bringing someone in new as well, like Sam Mack. It's not, not easy for him either, like to come in and you, we, he's trained once, he's trained for 40 minutes with us last night. Yeah, I, I couldn't be happier right now. Sam's joined the group. The thing about him is he's, he brings a great culture with him and, he, and his work rate. Like you don't have to question his work rate. If things are going wrong, it's just because he's making a couple of mistakes, but he's never gonna let you down as far as coming out and playing hard every night. Of course, coach Anthony Stewart uh, had that cheesy, cheeky grin back on his face, Ronnie. Uh, Jacob Dool describing him as a bit of a ticking time bomb to start the game. Calm, calm, calm. Bang, here came the aggression that we all love from Stewie, but 
is very happy after that game and smiles all around across the entire team. He's really happy with the way both the playing group and the coaching group worked in that matchup. Uh, absolutely, JB. He was he was very happy, and it's rare that we see Stewie smile for our for our games because I've always said that Stewie is like Lindsay Gage. You never know if he's winning or losing, but you could definitely tell after the game with that big smile on his face that he was winning that one. Very good to see a relieved Anthony Stewart, that's for sure. Made by nature, created by innovators, supplied by McKay's, your home of Tasmanian timber. A few weeks ago, we had our big launch with the GAP program, which is the Greyhound Adoption Program, and we were able to catch up with Chief Operating Officer, Andrew Jenkins. Let's throw to that one right now. Couldn't write the script. Uh, we're so delighted to have uh, Rex on board as part of our partnership with the uh, Hobart Chargers for the duration of the, the season. And if, even if we spin the great man around, we can see we've got our website on Rex's back, gaptaz.org.au. So just another way that uh, the organisations are partnering together. So we're really, really happy. We've got up to 27 dogs at a time in our, our GAP program. We've got nearly 10 of those at the moment that are already uh, available and, and ready for adoption and fostering. So it's going really well. Yeah, look, absolutely. We'd love to be involved. And most importantly, we'll, uh, we'll bring along our real stars of the show, uh, such as Bomber here and get them involved uh, week in and week out as well. We'd love to. Back here in the Chargers Hoops TV studio, and it would not be possible without our great sponsors the season 2022, McKay Timber, of course, our great friends at GAP, the Greyhound Adoption Program, and Ronnie, of course, your favourite app, the What's On app. Absolutely, JB. Now, now at the start of the show, I was, I was in Launceston, and I went through the What's On app here to find out what was going on in Launceston, and fair to say, quite a few events happening around up there. So get, on, get around the What's On app. Go and check it out, people. Don't miss out. Whatever part of your home you want to improve, Clenet's Mitre 10 has everything you need to get the job done. A wide selection of indoor and outdoor plants and pots. Paint for every style and every project. Complete DIY kitchens and bathrooms and all the tools you need for the job. The local Clenet's team know their huge range inside and out, so you'll get the right advice and the right product every time. Clenet's Mighty Helpful Mitre 10. Welcome back here to Chargers Hoops TV and of course Saturday night the Basketball Australia Centre of Excellence were in town for the NBL1 wildcard game which was on KO and KO freebies. Now the Hobart Chargers were backing up from Friday night to play the Centre of Excellence on Saturday night down at the Hobart Netball and Sports Centre and of course the first time we've been back to that venue since 2016 JB. What were your thoughts on the game? It was a pleasure first off to be a part of the KO and KO freebies broadcast. Great to be on pretty much national TV for this game here. It was a bitterly cold Saturday night in the Netball Centre and the Centre of Excellence though, they certainly provided the heat and warmed up the crowd. A strong crowd of around 300 people in there to see some of the best and brightest next generation talent from Australia. And they were probably the most disciplined side that we have seen in Hobart all year, of course, former Hobart and Nathan Brereton coaching that squad there. And from go to woe offensively and defensively, the center of excellence really controlling that game there. The adjustments that were made by the coaching staff were more mental rather than tactical. You could see the coaching staff really wanting to adjust things there so the players could just calm their heads and get back into what they're doing. Really stuck with the charges there for half time and then following that third, starting in that third quarter, really got onto the charges there. Of course, the charges, their first back-to-back -back home stand in, well, Ronnie, I might have to get a double fact check on that. In my time with the club, haven't seen them have a back-to-back -back home stand and back-to-back -back nights like that. So, you know, a bit of a challenge for our players as well. Obviously, Sam McDaniel, AJ Harris, Harry Froling and Ollie Angerstein, you know, the core of that starting lineup, you know, only playing their second game together and on a back-to-back. -back. Harry Froling really standing out, you know, triple-double alert there, you know, 22 points, 12 rebounds, 10 rebounds, I believe it was, nine assists, so flirting with that triple-double, but AJ Harris coming off a really big night, just not quite getting into it, had some foul trouble as well. Harry Froling with some foul trouble as well, and the COE getting over the top in that one, 85 to 74, and it was really good to see some of the next generation of talent 
on display as well. And we had a pretty good interview at half time with a legend of Australian basketball. Oh, absolutely, JB. We had three time NBL Championship winner Mark Brakey on our broadcast. And it was great to talk to Mark about, about his son Jensen playing with the Basketball Australia Centre of Excellence, but also too what he's up to currently these days. And we did kind of uh, reminisce about the good old days as well, too. So great to have Mark on our broadcast. It's been great to be here in the Chargers Hoops TV studio once again. Ronnie, we're going to take a bit of a break for the next few weeks, obviously with the league on break and the Chargers on the road. We're going to just kick back and relax and enjoy the coverage from the rest of Australia as well. We'll be back in four weeks' time with another edition of Chargers Hoops TV. It's been great to be in the studio to start the season, Ronnie. Yeah, absolutely. I'm now looking forward to the break. It's been a busy couple of months, but nice to have this rest and uh, looking forward to recharge the batteries and go again very soon indeed. As always, thank you for joining us here on Chargers Hoops TV and we will see you after the break.